you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Hello and welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Dr. Tom Rosell is not here today. I'm Dr. Leonard Poe. I'm going to be filling in for him. But like always, if uh, you've got a problem and you tried and applied and come up with the same old, same old, let's see if we can find some new solutions for you today. Give us a call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. And let's see if we can find some solutions for you without drugs, without surgery. See if we can get you into a, a better way of health and healthy living and wellness for the rest of your life. And we're going to talk about a couple different things today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the season that we're in right now, which is allergy season. I've noticed uh, a lot of patients coming in, allergies are starting up, it's hit us hard, it's hit us real heavy. What are some things you can do about it? How can you try to avoid this and keep the reactions down? And we're going to talk about that from a very, very particular standpoint today, and that brings me to my guest today, the, our newest addition to the office, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but the very lovely and talented Aaron Poe. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for being on with me today. Absolutely. This is interesting, because usually uh, I'm the guest, but now today I, I'm the host. and I'm the guest. You're the guest. Absolutely. Which is going to be fun. <laughs> so your, your particular expertise is in fitness. Correct. And training. So Let's talk a little bit about that, how that affects the immune system, how that affects your overall well-being, but particularly this time of year with allergies, because allergies really come back to being immune system patterns. How does training and exercise and fitness, how does that help? Well, I mean, like anything else in your life, exercise is going to impact it. And when I say you need to exercise regularly, I don't mean you need to go out and break your back five, six, seven days a week. We're talking the average person going out, 30 minutes a day, just doing some light walking, that in itself is actually going to improve your immune system function. And it really does it from a couple of very, very particular ways. Exercise is so inherently important to us. It helps reset so many body systems. And a lot of what I talk about in the office and I lecture on is I, I, I talk about things from this neuroendoimmune perspective of getting your neurology working right, getting your biochemistry working right, your immune system, your endocrine system, the hormones, all those different pieces. And exercise is really one of those key fundamental pieces that helps reset all those things and start to normalize it. And we were talking a little bit earlier about this. One of the big ways that it impacts the immune system is it starts to reset things like cortisol and your stress level. And in the thinking back, all of us have stress at a certain mm -hmm. level. When we talk about stress, it's not just mentally how do we deal with it, but it's the physiological reactions that we just we don't always have control over. And this past week's been an incredibly stressful week here in the nation. Uh, we all have regular stress in our lives, and these are stressful times for a lot of patients. Absolutely. And that's why we've seen over the past two, three years this massive increase in allergy reactions. And we've actually been on the news a little bit lately as well, where it seems like more people are getting allergies now. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the pollens and the trees and, and those things have changed. It's that our immune systems have changed. So exercise is really one of those things that can help and really benefit it because it helps reset your neurotransmitters, which are the working parts of the, the nervous system. It helps reset those cytokines. Right, and absolutely. I mean, you just said it right there, the neurotransmitters. You hear people say, I exercise, I get this you know, natural high, this feeling of good, this feeling of well-being. Well, mm -hmm. that's exactly it. After a, a certain period of time, 
you get into exercise and you actually feel good doing it. It's not this, I have to go work out. Oh my gosh. It's, wow. It's, it's always how it is going into it. It, it. it is. It it's is. It's always going into it. But really, once you establish that routine, you've come out feeling better. And you start to miss it. You do. And that's <laughs> once you get into it. It's, it's, and these are the kind of changes we talk about uh, with patients all the time. It's not a short term program, it's a lifestyle. And once you start it, and then you miss the days when you don't get exercise. Right. I but mean, you've got to take those first steps and get out there. You actually start feeling even more of a, a sluggish feeling to your body. You feel lethargic. You don't, just don't feel right, you know, until you actually get out there and start moving the body, which it was designed to do. Our bodies were not meant to sit there and just be still. And that's, that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, we're stuck in offices, we're stuck at desks, we're stuck in front of computers all day. I mean, the human body really was designed for rigorous, rigorous exercise on a daily basis. I mean, I mean, hard, hard work. The perfect and example, get to... perfect example would be kids. Yeah. Look at how fast and how much children, even toddlers, they move. They, they're all the time. All they're, the, yeah. they're in a state of motion all the time. A two-year-old and a and a seven-year-old, we know that well. <laughs> uh, they're always moving, and we don't. We just don't get enough of it. Right. And you know those those chemicals you're talking about getting uh, produced are things like endorphins and enkephalons, and, and we've heard about some of those things. But it helps reset things like serotonin and dopamine and some of those other neuromodulators that help us with our mood. So it helps with things like depression. It helps with things like. Uh, anxiety, all all those things help get reset so that we feel better. Right. Mentally, we feel better. But physically, we start to feel better as well. So when we come back, and I mentioned cytokines earlier, and those are really kind of the working parts of the immune system. Those all help get reset as well. So they get bolstered up to where they need to be. And the other things that start to impact immune function and stress in general, which is, you know, one of the big things we talked about, stress is... Stress just kills us. Yeah. It's one of those things that wears us down. It breaks down so many different body systems that if we don't do some things in our life, we don't get some things put in there that help reduce the stress, the physiological stress, then we're headed for a downward spiral that we just sometimes it's very, very difficult to, to crawl out of. You produce a hormone called cortisol, and that's one of your, your big stress hormones. And if you don't do some things to help modulate that, that's when that downward spiral gets out of control. Right. And exercise is one of the best things. Right. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier. It's not rigorous, this crazy intensity exercise, which a lot of people, this is where they make the mistake with exercise. They say, okay, I have to go and I just literally have to push and push and push until I feel sick to my stomach. Right. Not necessarily. Okay. There's times for that high intensity training, but if you're talking day to day, just getting out and getting your body just working the way it's supposed to again, we're talking modern intensity, really 30 to 40 minutes a day is great to start with. From there, that's what you build on. And that's one of the reasons why we have you as the new addition in our office. That's right. Because that's one of the things. Because everybody has a different starting place. And it's important to figure out, well, where are you in that grand scheme of things? Where do you need to start? You know, where should you keep your heart rate? How long should you be exercising for? What kind should you be doing more anaerobic or aerobic right and everybody's very different and those are the points that don't do it yourself i don't do it myself <laughs> luckily i have a wife that does it for me <laughs> don't try to do those things yourself that's where you need to be evaluated to see w how are you going to get the most bang for your buck here i mean really what, what kind of exercise do you need to get the results you want to get and to feel good and not burn yourself out more right and i mean the fundamentals of it i mean you've i've been on here before you guys have heard me talk at ageless health it really comes down to, one, what I assess people on is their core condition. The core is the foundation of anything. Again, I've said that millions of times. And from there, I assess people with just a few screens, movement screens, just to see how their body reacts. Because it's like you just said, everybody is at a different starting spot. And a lot of people have injuries. A lot of people have things that keep them back from that. And those have to be taken into account. And you've got to figure out what's your range of motion, all those pieces, so you don't hurt yourself more. Right. Because sometimes when we try to do it ourselves, that's what we have a tendency to do. And then we can't exercise because we're in pain or because of this or that. And, you know, those are the points that need to be helped and figured out. But you've got to get to a place where you can actually get out there and do it. Yeah, that's right. And, again, you know, 
even if you just start walking. Walking is the best thing you can do if you're trying to stick with an exercise program, mainly because you can do it anywhere. I mean, you can park at the end of a parking lot and walk into the store or walk into the office building. Take the stairs instead of, instead of the elevator. All of those count as exercise and a starting ground for people. You don't have to necessarily join the gym, the dreaded gym. That's why I always hear. Yeah, that's a, and, and that's a conversation that, you know, both of us will frequently have with our patients where, you know, what are you passionate about? What do you like doing? I don't care what it is. It doesn't have, if you hate going to the gym, don't go to the gym. Don't go to if the you gym. hate running, don't run. You know, find something that you love to do, you're passionate about. Go out and do that and do it vigorously for a little while. Get your heart rate up a little bit. Have fun with it. It doesn't matter what it is. Just move. Just, Just move. get out and move. Your body will thank you. In the long run, believe me. Uh, and like we're talking about, it's not just your physical self, but it's all those other things. It's your metabolics. It's your mood. It's your emotions. It's your whole well-being. And exercise is really a, a fundamental piece of that. And as far as holistic care goes and looking at the whole big picture of the human body, it's it, it's as natural as any other body function. You, you're supposed to have exercise. You're supposed to have movement. And you got to just get out there and do it. That's right. You got to find that time to get out and move. What are some of the things when when clients first come in for you and uh, that you look at with them? Just as you talked about an assessment, right? You know, what are some real basic things to look at? Really, first of all, I have people just stand up and I look at how their body weight is distributed between you know each hip the legs, the shoulders, how someone's posture is. From there, I take them through a basic squat. And you, people hear squat, they're like, oh, I can't squat. Essentially, what you're trying to do and what I'm looking for is how gracefully, in a way, just to best describe it, someone can get down into a chair and get up without torquing their body in an unnatural position. From there, I look at shoulder range of motion functions. I have them stretch in certain positions. Again, I'm looking for imbalances. I'm looking to see what their body is actually capable of doing at the level that they're at. And from there, if there's time at the end of their assessments, I'll put them through a few progressive exercises based on what I see. So at the end of that, they'll say, what can I start with immediately before our next session? I will give them tools to start with, whether it's, you know, hey, this person can handle more intense weight, more advanced stuff, or you know what, basic stretching exercises is where this person needs to start, basic range of motion exercises. But all of it essentially is geared around the core. And the things to do at home, or it, does it, it does it cost a lot of money? No, not at all. Okay, does it take a lot of time? Not at all. Okay, so it's pretty easy stuff to do. Yeah, that's why there's really not a whole lot of excuse as to why it can't get done. I tell patients all the time, things like a BOSU ball or a yoga ball, a couple bands or hand weights, uh, you know, you're talking maybe like 50 bucks worth of stuff Pretty at nice. the most. And Your body. You, there's like a million and one exercises you can do with that to start stabilizing and getting that core strength up and really start getting you to a better place of well-being. It's it's simple stuff to start with. It is. And really, you know, it, it, it makes me laugh sometimes when even some of my colleagues who are, form, you know, trainers and they're really heavy into lifting. These are some big guys. They'll come over and be like, you know, let me, let me see one of your workouts that you do. Because they really don't train core. It's amazing how it just guys don't cripples them down to the floor, you know. And they're like, "But I, I have got strong, you know, lats and pec muscles." And well, the thing is, they're not spending time to strengthen those little intrinsic muscles that support the spine and support those big muscle groups. So yeah, they are going to fail pretty quickly. And when we talk about things, you know, the, from the structural side, simple things like low back pain, mm -hmm. neck pain. All those things are aligned upon those core intrinsic muscles that you really don't have direct control over. No, they don't. And the sad thing is the core muscles are never stimulated when you are really sitting, unless you're sitting yeah. upright the whole time. And then you are engaging the core. But most people, they drive hunched over. They, you know, they sit at their computer desk hunched over. Um, you know, when they're relaxing at night, they're never upright. They're relaxed back on the couch, feet right. up, taking it easy. For hours at a time That's right. throughout the day. We're probably, the average person is probably sitting far more than up and moving and walking around. But that's why I tell patients, you know, every, you know, just like in grade school, and there's a reason why they don't let kids sit in grade school for more than 50 minutes. Because <laughs> after that, their neurological function goes down, the ability to think goes down, uh, and you start molding yourself in those bad postural patterns. Uh, and it causes lots and lots of problems for us down the road. Right. We're going to come up to a, uh, a little break here in just a minute to uh, get to some of the people that always help and, and, and make Dr. Tom Rizal live possible. And we'll be right back. 
This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Educate. Engage. Empower. Take control of your health with Dr. Tom Roselle and the Roselle Center for Healing. Information is power. Achieve an ultimate state of wellness with Dr. Tom Roselle's Education Lecture Series Video On Demand. Discover how to create an extraordinary life of optimal health and wellness. Visit drtomrosell.com slash education. That's drtomrosell.com slash education. Welcome back, everybody, to Live with Dr. Tom Rosell. I'm your host today, Dr. Leonard Poe. He's off somewhere having fun, and I kind of hope it's raining because I'm just, (laughs) quite frankly, jealous. But as I said before... Give us a call, 888-630-9625. We'd love to hear from you today. Uh, any questions, any questions at all? We're talking about immune function and allergy patterns and exercise and how these things play a role with each other. So please give us a call today. One of the things that uh, I noticed, see, we just, both of us just came from the gym. We just got done working out. That's what we like to do. Uh, the gym is our place. And we noticed it very very happily for me that uh, it was not nearly as crowded as it was in January. So it seems that uh, some of those New Year's resolutions have... Officially died off. They've, they've teetered off. And yeah. I noticed that gyms are all doing more open houses now as business has declined a little bit. Yep. So... And as predicted, when we were on here in January... I think we talked about we this. We did talk about this. <laughs> it's that time of year, and uh, it's starting to slow down. So you really have to ask yourself the question... Uh, if you made that New Year's resolution to get in better shape, to get fit, are you keeping up with it? And if you're not, why? And that's just it. You may actually find yourself saying, gosh, you know, I've been so tired and I just don't have the energy. Well, hasn't that what we've been talking about? Yeah. Exercise will actually give you those things back. It will. Make you feel a little bit more excited about life, get you through your day, get you through those aches and pains that come up when you aren't moving. Exer- it's the sad part. Is, is that exercise for us, just as a society, it's become something of leisure. It is. It's it's that fun thing maybe that we get to do or that extra thing when it really is a vital piece. You're, it's no different than your diet. It's no different than bowel function. It's something you're supposed to do every, every single day. And the sad thing is you're even seeing it with our youth. It's being removed from the school systems. And that I... That just... That's heartbreaking. Now these are that's when I started to get angry and inarticulate because it's the, it's the dumbest thing in the when they start taking recess out of schools it's it's the dumbest thing in the world right. okay those kids need energy there's a whole neurology behind uh, behind exercise that's so vitally important when you have exercise and you engage that motor cortex which is the front part of your brain it it starts to slow down some of the other lobes that are the ones that give us things like inhibition so when we don't do that, that's when kids, they, they can't sit, they can't concentrate, they can't, you know, they can't get the work done that they're supposed to get done. And then we just label them with things like ADD or ADHD. Right. You know, children need exercise, but adults do too. That's it's right. the same thing. And like I said, there's a reason why they don't let those kids sit for more than 50 minutes. And then you have a break and you go to another class and you do this or do that. But the exercise is so fundamentally important. Right. I mean, I mean, that's really what it's all about. It's like, you know, set those New Year's resolutions or set goals middle of the year. But the thing is, you got to stick to them. You got to find something that's good to keep your body moving. It's a lifestyle. And a lot of us get to that place because we start working out and we feel good. But then it kind of gets to being the same old, same old and... I'm not really losing the weight, or I'm not really, I just don't feel like I'm really getting anywhere over this. That's because your body's probably become very efficient at the type of exercise you are doing, right. and it's time to change it. Yeah, and, and a lot of us just don't realize that. Right, and it's with anything. It's a learning process, and you've got to educate yourself. And that's where finding that help, that outside source, either a trainer or someone who's just in the fitness industry can help you. you got yeah, exactly. Ask, don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask the question, what can I do? I, I'm not seeing changes anymore. How do I change this thing up now? I don't go, I, I, I like lifting weights, and I don't go more than three or four weeks until I change up 
the type of repetitions I'm doing, the type of lifts I'm doing, because I stop making any kind of gains. It starts, I'm almost going backwards. And you've got to make those changes. You've got to change it up from time to time, or you don't go anywhere. And that's really the foundation of why people lose those get fit, get in shape resolutions. Is because, you know, they all, they are, they're, they're gun ho. Even, I actually was better this year. You know, they hung in there till end of March, I would it say. It was a little longer this year. But the thing is, they'll do it solo. They won't get that guide, that aid to help them through it. And then that's when they die off because immediately at some point they'll say, gosh, I've been working hard now for three months and I'm still not seeing any changes to my body. Why? Yeah. It's, it's sad. Yeah. (laughs) It's sad. It's, uh, but it's something that you have to continually, you got to keep up with. Like I said, it's lifestyle, 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 and you have to, it's got to be integrated. Yeah, it does. And you got to find, I mean, you make time for it. Um, you know, I, I, during the week, I get up at 4 o'clock and go to the gym. Believe me, I don't like doing that. I would much rather sleep in. It's, I, I am not a fan of doing that at all, but that's really the only time during, I have during the day. So I make time, and I make sure that I get it in there because the days that I don't, I feel absolutely horrible. I feel 10 times worse. Yeah, you do. Your, your body feels it. It's, 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 like you said, it's mental and it's physical. And that's also what leads you into being more susceptible to, you know, colds. Colds and flus and feeling sick and feeling down and everything else. That's right. So if you're missing those New Year's resolutions, it's time to get back, get back in the gym, get back outside. Besides, it's so nice out today. Get outside and get some exercise. We're coming up on another hard break, but we'll be right back. I think we've got some calls to take. Stick with us. We'll be here in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Leonard Poe, and for Dr. Tom Rosell today, give us a call, 888-630-9625. You get to call Dr. Rosell every week. It's a limited time for me, so please give us a call, ask us any kind of questions. We've got J.D. from Alexandria has a question about exercise. Go ahead, J.D. Hi, uh, Dr. Poe. Getting more bang for your buck in terms of exercise, I'm wondering if uh, walking, if you're not putting such a palliative touch on exercise, how does walking build bones and muscle, and how do you uh, break a big sweat by just walking? Uh, I spend two, two and a half hours, uh, three or four times a week in gold gym. Uh, short of that, I just don't feel exercise. Well, you know, it, it all depends on, you know, you, you bring up some good points there. Uh, you know, it all depends on on where you are. And some people can exercise a little bit more than others. Some people right. have that capacity to go out there. Some people don't. Uh, anything that's weight-bearing, you bring in uh, uh, a point there about bones and osteoporosis, osteopenia. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have you've got to have gravity on the bones. And walking alone, you know, and if you want to take it up a notch, you know, little foot weights, little hand weights. Even a weighted vest. Even a weight at best um, can help kind of push that a little bit more. Um, and that's where, you know, we talked about in the beginning of the hour a little bit. Uh, it depends where you can start. You know, if, you know, for me, you know, walking probably isn't going to yeah. cut it for me either, but I'm, I'm in a little bit better shape for some people. Walking um, is all they can do. That's all they can do, and that's where they can start. So, it, I mean, it just... It really, really depends. Well, at 75, I don't feel uh, that uh, anything short of two and a half hours is much for me. <laughs> and that's fantastic. I, and that's fantastic. <laughs> and that's uh, that's absolutely where you should be. Um, you know, it, it would be great. It would be absolutely great if if everybody was like that. And I, I you know, I love people like you. You know, people like uh, you know, like Jack Lalane, yep. you know, who was you know. All the way into his, you know, his the very end was just a, you know, phenomenally fit human being. He was, and uh, you know, we should be. We Everybody should be. should be like that. Yeah, you the, know? it doesn't. You don't have to be young to be in the gym. No, age, age is really not a reference point here. And that's why we talk about ageless health. And the thing that I try I know to I get, sound like him. <laughs> you do. <laughs> the thing I try to get across to people is they're like, well, am I too old to start? No, you're not. That's the beauty about exercise. You know, it's that. People are certainly searching for that fountain of youth, the, the miracle pill. Well, guess what? That's called exercise. Yeah. Get out and move your bodies. You know, like this last gentleman just said, you've got to lift some weights. You've got to do a little bit more, stress the body a little bit more each time. Yeah. But again, everybody's got a starting point. And you got to build a build up to that point. That's right. And you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's. People like that really are amazing. Uh, yeah. you, you've got to you've got to push it. It's 
there's no other way to do it. No, I, I, I think I tell you this all the time that, you know, the closer I get to 40, I hope I'm better in shape then than I am now in my early 30s. Yeah, and, I'm far more better in shape now than I was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And that's how it should be. Each year, you should be getting better in shape. It shouldn't just be a, well, I'm just, you know, I'm getting older. I shouldn't do so much now. And That's where we, you know, we, we come to some really hard truths sometimes. And, and one of the things, and I know you get this question too all the time, well, you know, what can I take to lose weight? Or what can I take, you know, what, what, what about this supplement? What about that supplement? You know, sometimes there's some really hard truths and, well, you know, you got to put in the work. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes down to calories in, calories, calories out. out. And you've got to have a clean diet, and you've got to have exercise in there. You, you, there's no, there's no other way around some of those hard truths there. I mean, that's that's kind of the bottom line. And you know, I see that it's frustrating for people because you know they'll they'll push and they'll push and they'll push and they'll say, I'm just not getting anywhere. Isn't there that shortcut that I can take with? And you know, really. There's not. If you're going to be healthy with it and you're going to be successful with it, the problem with those aids, those drugs that are out there that assist, as they say, in exercise and in weight loss, is there are repercussions to them. You will, yeah, you may lose the weight, but guess what? As soon as you stop and you go back to what you were doing, not only will the weight come back, but you usually get extra pounds on top of it. And you've got to have some some reality check in there as well with... You know, well, what's healthy weight loss? Yeah. Because it's not, I, I use the analogy all the time with patients is, you know, what we're talking about is not a sprint, it's a marathon. That's right. And, you know, it's a pound to two pounds a week. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you've got to look at this long term. And the thing is, the reason you don't want to max out your weight loss so quickly, I mean, you want gradual weight loss, is because it plays havoc on your metabolism, okay? That's the key to a successful weight loss environment. The up and down and up and down is not a healthy thing. You know, one of the things that affected me in high school was uh, playing uh, playing football and then wrestling season. Yeah. And the uh, the up and down and up and down in weight and body fat between the two uh, was not healthy. And there were uh, repercussions for my metabolism for years after that. Yeah. And, you know, the sad thing is once you damage that metabolism, it takes time to heal. It and, does. And so if you've got years of history of abusing that metabolism with the yo-yo dieting, and then you finally get serious with exercise and diet, but nothing happens, well, chances are things are happening, but they're just happening on a different level, and it's going to take time for that metabolism to repair itself and start progressing forward. And the metabolism is, is such an important piece when it does come to exercise for lots of whether we're talking about adrenal function or thyroid function or immune function or any of those things. You want those things working in your corner. You want those pieces of metabolism working for you because if they're not working for you, chances are they're working against you. Right. And that's another reason sometimes why we don't make the progress we want to make. And we get frustrated. We get sad. And that's when uh, it doesn't matter what I do or what I eat. I'm not losing weight, so I might as well go to McDonald's. Right. And, and you know, there's something that's not right for you. And that's when you got to start figuring those people, those those different pieces out. Blood sugar is another big aspect. And we haven't talked about that yet today, but that's an important piece with immune function as well. And that's an important piece for exercise. Right. And, you know, it's, you've got, you know, I tell people, you know, when in my little questionnaire that they fill out when they first come to see me, you know, there's, there's a question on there. How many times a day are you eating? You know, and it's sad when I see someone say one, when they have one meal, how can they get through a 12 to 15 hour day with one meal? It the problem is you can't. Me. You can't. It baffles me. Not well. No. You're surviving at that point. You're uh, not living. Unbelievable. Well, when you're, you, blood sugar is going to get affected for, for a couple different reasons. One, you know, what you're eating. Right. You know, if you're eating, you know, just junk food right. all day long, you're eating high sugar, high glycemic index type foods, it's going to be high. It's going to run funny. And long run, you're going to end up with things like insulin resistance and eventually diabetes. Right. The other thing, though, is stress is going to affect that mm -hmm. because cortisol, which is your stress hormone, so when you come under stress, it affects insulin and it affects the body's ability to use blood sugar appropriately. So if you're stressed, that's what, you know, eating and running is a bad, not literally running, but <laughs> eating and, and then, you know, you know, a working lunch, you know, when you're busy and you're stressed and you're eating, that blood sugar is not being handled correctly. Right. And then just how often do you eat? Right. I mean, okay? really, you should be eating every two and a half to three hours. Yeah. And people because like, if you skip in between that, then you get these huge insulin surges. And your body goes into the survival mode. Right. And if you, that excess blood sugar is just floating around out there what in our you know what else loves sugar in the body 
well, any kind of bacteria, any kind of fungus, any kind of virus. virus. And that brings us back to, well, you know, why are allergies so bad? Why do we get sick sometimes? Take a look at your diet. Di- diet's a huge piece. It is. And so what does exercise do for you? Well, exercise kind of helps stabilize, again, all of those components we've been talking about. But the thing also with exercise, when people come in to see me especially, I'm like, all right, you ready to go? They're like, yeah, I'm tired. Well, when's the last time you ate? They will have a 5 o'clock appointment with me. They haven't eaten since 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, of course they're tired. There's no energy. Yeah. Food is energy. Food is what helps propel the body. It's like, believe it or not, 70% of the results that you see on your body come from what you put into your mouth. 70%. That is huge. That's more than half. Yeah. And getting someone to realize that is a is a, a an effort in itself some days. So is it always the less you eat, the better you are? No, 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 no. no. You've got to eat to lose weight. You've got to eat to build muscle. You've got to eat, but eat the right things to stay strong, to have that energy, to keep your body in a state of motion, but healthy motion. Right. And that's that's the big key right there, you know. And going back to the, the quick fix things, you know, people are like, I want a six-pack. I want these abs. Well, what are you cooking in your kitchen? Or what are you eating? Because that's really what determines how your body looks. And, you know, having that Snickers bar and a cup of coffee, not going to cut it. That's not really a good pick-me-up middle of the afternoon. There's good food. There's bad food. There's good fats. There's bad fats. Good grains, bad grains. Yeah. It's... And the thing is, people know the difference nowadays. It's not a big secret. It's not like this big conspiracy that we're hiding, you know, the secret to success. No. It's out there enough in the public, on the Internet, on the radio, with us. You know, we talk about this weekly. You know, the importance of the right foods going into your body. That all determines how successful you are, not only just in your life, but also with exercise. Because if you're lethargic after you've eaten you're not going to want to go work out. And usually the reason you are lethargic is because you've eaten something that's not good for your body. Right. It's the same, you know, it's that, it's, you know, the silly little expression that you hear all the time about, you know, putting junk on the engine and, you know, how well is it going to run? You know, it, it's, it's a, it's a silly metaphor, but if you're putting stuff in your body that shouldn't be in there, then it's not going to run right. And your metabolism's not going to work right. And you're not going to run right. And a, a huge component to that is, if I had to dissect the diet, people in general do not get enough protein. They do not get enough protein in their diet. I mean, it's. I'll, I'll look at someone's diet and I see maybe that they're getting 30 to 40 grams of protein a day. Exactly. And I, I don't know how they're surviving on that. Far more carbohydrates. Yeah, and, and sugary carbohydrates at that. And, and not enough fats. And you really need a solid foundation of protein. Protein is what helps stabilize, as you say all the time, your adrenals. They help support the metabolism. You know, it's... Overall, that's what fills you up is protein. It's not the carbohydrates, you know. You've, you've, those proteins are, are that's what builds your tissue for you. Okay. So if you don't have them, if you're not getting them in your diet for any number of reasons, and we could we could get into so many topics all on, just on the GI tract and absorption and everything else, but if you're not getting proteins and not absorbing them well, you can't repair. And so this is another big place that people make the mistake where they're exercising, they're working out, they're trying to do the right things. But if you don't have those founding proteins and you're breaking down tissue when you exercise, which you should do right. to make gains, to grow, if you don't have those building blocks there to replace and repair afterwards, then we start to build up injuries. We start to get hurt. And, and that's when we stop. And that also is what makes you more susceptible to getting sick, too. Because, Cold, flus. Yeah, because if your body's injured, your whole immune system's not going to be firing the way it needs to. And that, in turn, will lead you to picking up more of those viruses, more of those colds that your kids bring home from school. I mean, it, it all it all interacts together. And the thing is, people, you know, they'll turn to me, well, you know, I did this and I tried that. Well, I look at them, did you really do that? Did you? And that's when they kind of get that sheepish grin, like, well, maybe not like I should have. Well, sort of. Well, sort I of. sort of tried it. <laughs> well, then you didn't try it. You know, There's a little difference there. It's, you know, the biggest piece with exercise and lifestyle and diet really comes into accountability and being honest with yourself. And that's, you know, as a trainer talking to somebody, that's the biggest piece getting the client to admit accountability. You know, so they're not really lying to me. They have to own the fact that they're lying to themselves and then make those changes and that only happens really is 
if you're ready to make those changes and if you're tired of feeling sick and if you're tired of feeling tired. You know, and a lot of us are at the beginning of the year. Yeah, after Thanksgiving New and Year's, Christmas. We're, we're ready. <laughs> and about this time of year, it kind of dies off again. So maybe we need to have like a, a an April resolution, April. It, well, a it spring be. resolution. It's, it's like bathing suit season just right around the corner. Why wouldn't you want to stay motivated in the gym? <laughs> for For a lot of people, it's hard. But that's where, yeah, you need somebody to look at what you're doing, how you're doing it. And really reevaluate it so that you're not doing the same old, same old, because it's no longer good for you. It's no longer working for you. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back again. We're going to talk about this a little bit more and uh, get a few more of your perspectives on it. If you're looking for the best in natural health, wellness, and green living products, shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com. You'll find a variety of products and resources that are designed to help achieve an ultimate state of health and wellness. Shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com today. Visit DrTomRoselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. That's DrTomRoselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. This is Dr. Tom Roselle, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Welcome back to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. This is Dr. Leonard Poe. In studio with me today is Aaron Poe. Yes, I am. The newest uh, addition in our office. <laughs> Gladly. We're glad to have you as well. <laughs> so, talking about exercise, talking about how it affects everything, talking about those New Year's resolutions that uh, for a lot of us have kind of fallen to the wayside. Yeah. And so, what are some of the reasons that that people aren't following through with them? You know, I, I kind of look at it as, as three big things. Either we started out right, and you were doing the right things, and the exercise was going well, but then it teetered off, and you're not getting the results that you want anymore. You've got some fatigue. It's, you know, you're starting to get injured um, because you haven't changed it up. Right. And that's probably the first first of real three things that, that people find themselves with. They just haven't changed it up, and yeah. it's time to, and either... You just didn't know that you needed to do that, or you didn't know what to do. So you keep either doing the same old, same old, and uh, you're not getting the the results that you want now, and it's time to change. You know, and if most people are out there, like anything like me, personally, I get bored pretty quickly with things. And, you know, at first for me, exercise it wasn't this, like, gung-ho, let's go do You know, it was after the first kid, really getting into it. It was tough. And... The only way you really start to learn about exercise is education. you got to educate yourself. Right. And that just comes, you don't necessarily have to sign up with a trainer, but you know what? If you are at a gym or you know somebody who's in the athletic field, you can ask them questions. That's why they're there. You need to know what to do. And, you know, really, injuries happen because you're using the same groups of muscles the same way over and over. So your body really, it adapts, but then you take it to that point where you're not giving it enough downtime to recover. And eventually you tear something, you hurt something. You've got to change it. You've got to change it. You've got to change it. The second reason, really, was that you weren't doing the right things to begin with. Right. And that's, you know, that's where some people came up three months later, but if you weren't doing the right things to begin with, you didn't see the progress, and you you just never really got off to the right foot because they weren't the right exercises for you, or it was too much, or it wasn't enough, or you were working areas that were already injured. Right. And so making sure that structurally you're okay to to work out, making sure that structurally you're okay to exercise. If you weren't, you probably got injured, you probably didn't make any gains, and... You ended up stopping. You know, and it's funny you say that because I had a patient come to me and say, you know, Aaron, is it best to be treated before or after my workout? And I said, you know what? Personally, for me, I prefer much better having that good adjustment, knowing my body is in alignment going into an exercise. 
because at least I know my body is going to be using the right muscle groups and it's not going to be compensating for my body being right. out of alignment. The mechanical advantage is there. That's right. And then for the third reason for a lot of people, metabolically, it just it wasn't working for you to begin with. It's probably still not working for you now. There's a problem. You either have things like anemia or thyroid dysfunction or adrenal dysfunction, all sorts of, of different kind of metabolic problems that tend to work against you. And if you think that's the case, if the blood work doesn't look right or you have some of these pre-existing problems, then you got to get those things solved. you got to go about figuring out, well, what's wrong metabolically that's not going to get me where I want to go? And that's one of the things we can help you out with. Dr. Rizal should be back next week, I believe. Yeah, he'll be back. Okay. Well, I, I hear him on the commercial, so I can never get away from him. <laughs> but he'll be back here next week bringing you everything that you want and need to know about natural, holistic health care, how to get it done, how to get yourself healthy without drugs, without surgery. Thank you. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's Mm bestinsmile.com. Thank you.